This is a palm we ordered from Palm Sunday. I don't know exactly where it come from, but it would have been nice to begin my sermon by making a connection between uh, this palm, the Middle East, Jesus. Unfortunately, the news somehow moved me in another direction. A few days ago, about a week ago, we have learned the name of a small Middle East uh, town in Syria, Khan Shakun. And after a chemical attack last Tuesday, more than a hundred of civilian, men, women, children, have died and many more needed uh, urgent medical attention and treatments. Almost every government in the world has condemned this event that defies all the treaties of international treaties that exist. Emergency meeting of the uh, United Nations Security Council has been called to address this issue. Last Thursday, the United States launched 59 Tomahawk missiles, which also killed about 10 more civilians. If I had to guess, I would say in approximately two weeks, we will barely remember that this ever happened. We will have move on to something else. And the reason being is the way our media cycles are organized. A media cycle is how the media are reporting on some event followed by the media's reporting on public or other reaction to the earliest report. And traditionally, uh, a media cycle lasts 24 hours. After this mark, newer and fresher news are needed to feed the beast. However, with the, the rise of uh, cable and satellite uh, news channel, uh, blogs, and social media, our attention span um, and memory seems to have shortened considerably. Can you remember what was the headlines only three weeks ago? or the topic of my sermon? Uh, don't feel bad, I don't have to check. This tendency to rapidly up to the next news, object, trend, event, is probably as old as humankind. For example, this morning we read from the Gospel according to Matthew the story of the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, fully knowing that the crowds who cheered him changed their mind and allegiance only a few days later. And like many before us, we still struggle to understand the reasoning under this tragic sequence of events. How could it be possible, we wonder? And then it comes to us. The crowd was made up of human beings, of people like you, like me. People who are very often ambivalent, people who are fickle, people who love one day and move on to the next topic the, other one, the next day. For example, very Canadian, very Ottawa exam example, let's take the hockey team, the uh, Ottawa Senators. They had a very good season. The fans learned to love uh, and appreciate coach uh, Guy Boucher, who brought structure to the game. Uh, the fans were touched by the story of goalie uh, Craig Anderson, who kept playing when his wife was fighting cancer. Uh, of course, they evidently love Eric Carlson. That's probably the best defenseman in the, in the league. And in a few days, the playoff will begin and all the fans will be behind their team. 
However, I can assure you, if the senator lose four in a row, people will, talk, will call talk radio and ask to trade half of the team and fire the other half. <laughs> that's, that's, that's crazy like that. And it's not just hockey. Uh, the same can be said about politicians, uh, pop idols, or anyone else in public sphere. The crowds only want to cheer for the winners, for the winning side. And Jesus probably knew all of this very well. So following a very successful ministry in Galilee, he decided to bring his message to Jerusalem and in order to have a, an impact, a huge impact, he selected the busy time of the festival of Passover to enter into the city with his disciple. At that time, Passover was really a big event. Historians and archaeologists estimate that the city um, quadrupled its size, its population, uh, during that week. Just try to imagine everyone living in the city of Toronto, okay, deciding at the same time coming to visit people in Ottawa. And you would not even reach the proportion of growth that Passover brought to Jerusalem. So obviously, uh, to be noticed, Jesus needed something, needed what we would call today a publicity stunt to attract attention in this huge chaos. So he decided to dig into Zechariah's prophecy and to ride into Jerusalem on the donkey, to be more precise, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And Jesus' little um, public relations setup really work well. The crowd who, who were hungry for a messianic figure notice him and, and notice him right away and went totally berserk. In the original Greek version, the author of the gospel used the word of earthquake to describe the turmoil he created. The, pre, the people present that day understood all the symbols in front of them and gave Jesus a royal welcome. Some spread their clothes on the road and other cut branches and, from the tree and plants, placed them on Jesus' path. In less time it takes to tell, he became Jerusalem's main attraction. It was the place to be in town even if many a no clue who he was. Who is he? They inquired. Ah, who cares? He looked like a real hero, like a winner, so we will listen to him, we will believe him, we will follow him. And more than his sermons, debates with the authorities or miracles, this single moment made Jesus very dangerous for the establishment of the time. For the elites and powers, there's nothing scarier than people becoming excited, people reclaiming hope, people organizing themselves. This is how revolutions start. This is how a mass movement can sweep everything on its path. Oh, the priests, the scribe, and the elders of the people understood they need to change the narrative and speed up this new cycle. They had to find ways to lead the crowd to forget about him and to move on to something else. They need to create this impression that when arrested and trialed, the people wonder, who is he again? Oh, 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 that... That Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, yeah. Well, he must not have been such a great Messiah after all. Well, let's wait for the next one. Somehow those in power in Jerusalem succeeded. We all know the tragic end of the story. However, we still remember and celebrate this event because it's 
teaches us a thing or two about courage and faithfulness. Jesus, you see, Jesus and his followers did not possess any authority to change the world. They were just a bunch of nobodies from nowhere. And yet, neighbors and friends, stranger and distant travelers, men and women march into the city in the, with Jesus, filled with this desire to build a new world in which all the humiliations, the hardships, the exclusionary practices that have so long defined their existence would disappear. And history is filled with many more uh, stories of common folk who have recognized that they were able to accomplish more when they were together than alone. People who organized themselves, people who signed petitions, people who marched in the streets. Obviously, like today, it not has been easy. Those in power, those who benefit from the status quo, those who had something to lose, opposed and even attacked them. It took a great deal of courage, determination and conviction to, for these individuals to proclaim publicly that peace was possible in a time of war, that racism can be overcome by justice, that dignity is a right for all without exception. Today we might not remember the names of those movers and shakers who might who protest, who organize, who, who, who sacrifice so much in their lives. It does not matter. They got things moving. They brought change. They succeeded despite the odds. And we might have forgot their names, what they have done, but surely we can enjoy the fruits of their labor today. So when we wonder what could Jesus possibly have done in approximately a week that so disappointed the supporter that they turn on him, we have to come to the conclusion that the answer is absolutely nothing. He did all the right things. With his disciple, he marched, he raised the issue, he challenged the authorities. It is us, the crowd, the people, who got distracted, forgot, move on to the next thing, to the next breaking news. Maybe it's in our human nature to easily forget. This is why we're called to remain faithful to our beliefs and our conviction. This is why we need symbols like this palm to remain focused on what is really important, on our beliefs, on our value for us and for the rest of the world. Amen.